In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the starter in a 2008 Honda Accord. If you find any part of this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. Also, if you want to watch more Honda videos the moment we release them, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. With all of that out of the way, let's jump right in. In order to access the starter, we need to remove the intake manifold. And in order to remove the intake manifold, there are quite a few things that we need to get out of the way first. Don't get discouraged as I will walk you through each section step by step so you can do it without issue. First, we need to remove the plastic shroud around the top of the bumper. These are secured with plastic push clips. You will probably break a few of these as they are pretty fragile, especially since this car was made in 2008. I'm using a special clip removal tool. I have it linked in the description below if you are interested, as well as every other tool I use in this video. Once you have removed all eight clips, you can then remove the plastic shroud. You can pull up on the hood latch and make it easier to remove also. And there we go. Now we need to remove this tube that helps direct air into your air filter. These are also secured with two plastic clips. Once that's removed, just pull up on the tube and it should come free. Next, we need to disconnect the battery to cut off all power to the car. Just remove the negative terminal with a 10 millimeter socket and push it out of the way. I didn't remove the battery yet, but you will see me remove it shortly. This will give you more access to the throttle body and the bottom bolt to the intake manifold. Now grab your 10 millimeter socket and loosen the two hose clamps on your intake tube. Push the tube out of the way. Before removing your throttle body, you need to push this tab out and lift up on the plastic piece. Next, grab your 12 millimeter socket and remove the four bolts holding the throttle body in place. Be careful, there are two silver brackets on the back that you need to grab after removing the four bolts. As you can see, I should have removed the battery and the battery tray before doing this. This will give you a lot more room to work with on these bolts. Once those bolts are removed, I decided to finally remove it. So grab your 10 millimeter socket and loosen the positive terminal on the battery. Remove the terminal and push it out of the way. If you don't have a bracket like this, you can just remove the battery without issue. If you have a bracket, you will need to do one of two things. The first you can do is loosen these bolts at the top to relieve the tension holding the battery down. Or you can try to push down on the bracket and then twist one way or another. This looks extremely easy on video because this battery tray was broken in the back. So once I grabbed it, it seemed to come apart. Hopefully yours will be just as easy. Once you remove the battery bracket, just pull the battery out. Then you need to get a pair of pliers and detach the wire harness connected to the battery tray. Just squeeze the plastic tab and pull away from the tray. Once that's removed, you should be able to pull up on the battery tray to remove it. Now let's get that engine cover off. This is secured with two 10 millimeter bolts. Remove those and pop the cover off. Next, remove this bolt holding a bracket for a wire harness to the manifold. This will allow you to move the manifold out of the way later. I believe this was a 10 millimeter bolt. Now this bolt is kind of hard to get to, but necessary to remove. This is a 12 millimeter bolt securing the bottom of the intake manifold. Remove that and then we can move on to the top of the manifold. Next, you can remove these two vacuum hoses right here. I only removed one, but you will see me remove the other one later. Now there are four 12 millimeter bolts and two 12 millimeter nuts holding the intake manifold in place. So six 12 millimeter bolts and nuts holding the top and sides of the intake manifold must be removed. You need to relocate these two vacuum lines behind the white bracket that holds them in place. Pull them to the right then towards the front of your car. Now you need to remove this blue electrical connector right here. Next remove the other vacuum line that I should have removed earlier. Now pull the manifold back and get ready to remove the other vacuum line on the inside. Use pliers to move the hose clamp out of the way and then pull the vacuum line off. Your intake manifold just push it off to the side. There is a 12 millimeter bolt holding this wire harness in place. It's tricky to get to. As you can see, you cannot simply access it under this tube. What you need to do is go over the top of the tube with a swivel socket. That should give you enough clearance to get the bolt out. Just make sure you don't drop it and lose it behind there. Now disconnect this electrical connector. All you have to do is push the tab on the back and it should slide right off. Next, let's get this wire harness out of the way. Grab your pliers and squeeze the tabs together and push through the bracket. And there is one last electrical connector to remove in the back here. Again, just push the tab on the back and it should come right off. Now we can remove the two bolts holding the starter in. The top bolt is a 14 millimeter. I decided to use this ratcheting wrench. This is a 17 millimeter bolt. The bolt finally came free and I removed the starter. Now before you install the new starter, you want to compare it to the old one to make sure it's identical. If there are any differences, you may need to return it for another one. Now put the starter in, making sure the teeth face the opening to your flywheel. I installed the 14 millimeter top bolt first and zipped it in with my electric ratchet. Then I moved on to the 17 millimeter bottom bolt. Once that is complete, you can reinstall everything. Here's the intake manifold going back in. I forgot to record this part, but don't forget to install the vacuum line on the inside of the intake manifold. Also make sure all hoses and wires are out of the way when putting this back in place and make sure you secure the two vacuum hoses on the left of the manifold back into the white bracket. Now you can install all of your nuts and bolts for the intake manifold. Remember, these are all 12 millimeter. Once those are all tight, you can put the vacuum lines back in place. 
push them on, then slide the clamp up. Then push the blue electrical connector back into place. And don't forget about this wire bracket. This was secured with that 10 millimeter bolt. Now grab the two brackets for the throttle body and make sure these two holes line up with the two tabs coming off the intake manifold. This is what the throttle body holds onto to keep the throttle body mounted to the intake manifold. Once those brackets are in place, line up your throttle body and start screwing in the 12 millimeter bolts by hand. After all four bolts are finger tight, you can use a regular socket wrench to get them hand tight. And don't forget this plastic clip. Just push down to secure it back to the throttle body. Now grab your intake tube and push it back into place with the throttle body in the filter box. Secure the two 10 millimeter hose clamps. Put your battery tray back in and make sure you secure that wire harness again. Place your battery into the tray and then place the battery shroud around it. Once that is complete, you can then secure the terminals to the battery. First start with the positive, which is red, then connect the negative, which is black. Secure both with the 10 millimeter bolts attached to the terminals. If you still have your positive terminal cap, put it back in place. Now all you need to do is put the battery brace back in. Place it over top and maneuver the post. If you have done it correctly, it should look something like this on the front and back. Next, you need to put your RAM Air 2 back into place. Just push it back into place and then install the two plastic tabs in the front. Same thing with the plastic shroud that goes on top of the front bumper. Don't forget to lift your hood latch up, then secure it with the plastic push tabs. Your engine cover is easy. There's a little grommet here that secures it to the post on the engine. Once you get that in place, you should be able to easily screw on the 10 millimeter bolts by hand. Make sure they are hand tight with your ratchet or wrench when you are done. All that's left is to start the engine to make sure it works and you don't have a check engine light. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up as it really helps with the algorithm. Also, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss a video from our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.